I'm back on Chisel Beach. It's just after six o'clock in the morning. Light's coming up. We're at the top of the tide and there isn't a breath of wind. You can just hear the waves fapping in the background. I'll just really, before I start, just go through the equipment that I'm using today. So the rod and reel I'm using is just a standard spinning outfit. You see there, it's a nine foot spinning rod. And the weight it casts is 10 to 40 grams. I'm using about a, a, a two ounce weight, which is a little over what's recommended, uh, but it seems to work okay with that. The reel is just a standard spinning reel. This is quite a cheap one. Um, it's loaded with 10 pound monofilament and I've got a shock leader attached here which is 20 pound and I'm using an, an all bright knot to connect them. If I get down to the business end, at the end of my shock leader I've just got an ordinary barrel swivel and that's rated way above what the shock leader or the main line is. Then I've got a three rig feather trace these are just tinsels and a two ounce lead weight just looped onto the end that's the kit the cast I normally use is the Brighton cast or the simple off the ground cast and the reason for this is because it's quite an accurate cast but also I get a bit more distance for a lot less effort so I've laid my weight down on the ground it's got about a half a rod length of line to the tip which is just off the ground and then it's a case of rotating my body and the rod and releasing at 45 degrees. It feels a bit awkward at first when I started this using this method, but after a while I got used to it. And also after a couple of hours, I don't feel the kind of back pain from constantly casting overhead that I used to. The retrieve I normally use is just a simple draw and sink method. And I'm using the rod as a lever, pulling in a section of line, then winding back with the reel to take up the slack. And my weight's being pulled forward and then stopping, pulled forward and then stopping. It also, as I'm winding back, taking up the slack, because there's not a lot of pressure on the line, I'm reducing the kind of line twist that I get. At this time of the day, it's normally not too long before I hit into a fish or even a couple. And despite the size of them, I'm always surprised at the, at the kind of pace and fight that these fish put up. Despite the competition from the local fishing boats and anglers, there's quite a lot of fish to be had in these big shoals that move up the beach. Often I'll find myself with a full rig or just taking them one at a time. The only really big problem with mackerel fishing is when to stop. So to kill the mackerel, I'm just going to bop it on the head with a metal bar. This is actually off my tripod, it's got a bit of brass in the end, but anything heavy is doing. It's just a case of hitting it there, and that should kill it pretty instantly. It'll still wobble and jerk. So another method of killing them is literally get your finger in the mouth, behind the neck, and snap the neck right back until the spine's broken. So to store the mackerel before I gut them, while I'm fishing, I'm just using a cool box and I can drop my mackerel in. And this is going to keep the wind and obviously the sun off them. I've got a couple of cool packs in there that I can just mix around. That's going to stop them going a bit yucky before I get a chance to gut them. To gut the fish, what I'm using is actually a baiting knife. Um, and I can take them out. And all I'm going to do, chop the head off, throw that in the sea behind me, and open up the cavity down to the anal vent, which is at the back there. And I can rip the guts out again, throw them away behind me. And the only thing to do then is open up this area here, which is full of blood. I'll put them to one side, do a few more and then give them a wash. Head off. 
the great thing about using a board is I'm not blunting my knife on the stones. So when I finish with my gutting and I've got my cool box full of fish, I'm going to put my board, my knife and sheath and all my bits and take it down the water and give it a good wash out of the seawater. I'm back in the kitchen, I'm just going to fill up my mackerel. I'm using just a standard kitchen knife and I've got a cutting board. And all I'm going to do is just run my knife on this side of the spine. So there's the first fillet off. And then I'm going to take out this bit of bone here from the ribs. Just slide underneath it. Get rid of that there. There's a line of bones here. Um, and the easiest way to get them out is just to run the knife either side and take out just a flap of skin, flesh. You can leave them in, I, I often do to be honest, because they're not exactly. Um, but that's the fillet done. I'm just going to dip it in a bit of water there. For the other side, I always get confused which way I'm going to do this. I suppose I can start at the back. Again, the knife running down the spine. Get that onto my newspaper and then go under them bones again. Get rid of that. I'm going to take off this bit where the fin is there because there's always a bit of nasty bone in there. And then cut either side of these midline bones. Flap of skin out, bit of a wash. Job's done. So to cut the fillets, I'm just going to dab them dry with a bit of paper towel. And then get a bit of salt and pepper on them. Both sides. I'm using a, a non stick frying pan. I'm just going to put it on a medium heat with a little bit of olive oil. I don't want a lot, I don't want to kind of deep fry them. I'm just going to smear that around the pan. And then give it a couple of minutes to heat up. I can take one of the fillets and just test. Yeah, probably just about right. Let's lay that down. And that. So really what I want to do is cook them almost three quarters of the way through and the flesh should kind of change colour as it's cooking. See, maybe better at that angle. So I can see there the white edge there where it's cooked and that's come up, it's probably about halfway through the fillet. 
So it's pretty close now, it's about three quarters of the way through. I'm going to take a little bit of butter. Just drop that in. I don't want the butter to burn. That should probably take about another minute. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, or even just go and do some mackerel fishing. Thanks for watching.